Devil's Breath, or scopolamine, is made out to be the most dangerous drug in the world. We're here chasing after the most dangerous drug in the world. But is it really? Let's find out about it. I'm Mr. Stick, and as you can see, I'm a stick. I use drugs on a regular basis. For the last time, fertilizers are not drugs. Devil's Breath is the street name given to scopolamine in powder form. Scopolamine is a substance found in the nightshade family of plants, such as angel's trumpets, deadly nightshade, corkwood, and mandrake. There's a Harry Potter joke in there somewhere. You grasp your mandrake firmly, you pull it sharply up out of the box. Scopolamine acts by inhibiting acetylcholine within the nervous system. Why does that sound familiar? Because it's the same way that Botox works. And I made a video about it. Depending on the dosage, scopolamine can have a range of effects. In low doses, it's used in anti-nausea medication in the form of patches for seasickness or pills for post-operative nausea. At higher doses, it can cause confusion, drowsiness, amnesia, and even death. But lots of things are deadly in the right amount, even water. If you drink too much water, you could die. Think about a gallon and a half or about six liters in three hours without needing it. The electrolyte density in you becomes so low that your neurons stop firing. And while that would be beneficial for mankind with some individuals, hey, I ain't talking about me. You really want your neurons firing normally. Other things are so deadly that a grain of salt worth of the stuff could kill millions of people. And I made a video about it. Yeah, I'm still talking about Botox. It's amazing how with some substances, an amount so small that you can barely see it can f*** you up so bad. That's why I'm a poison of choice is alcohol! And your activity of choice is passing out. Seriously, you should stop drinking so much. Scopolamine is said to have been used as a hallucinogenic drug for hundreds of years, although not in its pure form, and they probably weren't very pleasurable experiences. But sh we've been using anything that we can smoke, snort, rub, or ingest to get a high, so it's no wonder it's on the list. At the beginning of the 20th century, scopolamine was used in a procedure called Twilight Sleep. Hey, I fell asleep watching Twilight as well! We can't be friends anymore. Not that Twilight. But I'm not even going to try to pronounce this word. Demoschlaf. They would give a mixture of scopolamine and morphine to women during childbirth. Morphine for the pain and scopolamine until they went into a state of amnesia, so they wouldn't remember the pain. That doesn't sound nice at all. Yep. At around the same time, it was also used as a truth serum, since in the right dose it can make people lose their inhibitions. But, and that's a big but, you don't really know how much was the truth and how much was made up. Hallucinations tend to be that way. So what about the most dangerous drug in the world part? Well, apparently scopolamine is the drug of choice in Colombia for theft, rape and even murder. In 2012, the US Overseas Security Advisory Council mentioned that scopolamine was used in most cases of robberies with drugs in Colombia, and that the unofficial estimated number of scopolamine cases per year is around 50,000. I had to use the Wayback Machine to read that. Vice did a documentary on this where they interviewed victims and perpetrators. They mentioned spiked food or drinks, but also the use of scopolamine in powder form blown in people's faces which apparently turns them into mindless zombies that carry out any instructions from their aggressors, hence the name Devil's Breath. Why do you say apparently? You see, some experts don't believe that scopolamine could be used effectively as a powder. The people from the Vice documentary claiming to use the drug are not the most trustworthy around. <laughs> Let's just say you wouldn't present them to your parents. Then the victims themselves could easily have ulterior motives for claiming that they got devil's breath used on them. Like hiding a gambling debt or getting back at your soon-to-be ex. I'm not saying that those things didn't happen to them, but people have been known to lie. Listen. I've said it 
for seven years. I've said it for longer than seven years. I have never doped. That's crazy. I would never do that. I, that that's, no, no way. It's very hard to discern fact from fiction, although getting your food or drink spiked with scopolamine is definitely possible. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. We know of the amnesic effect of scopolamine, but it may also be accompanied by hallucinations and incapacitation. So it might be that some people actually lose their free will and just give their attackers everything they ask for. The ones that don't go in such a state probably get robbed the old fashioned way. And I'm sure that there are many people just claiming to have been under the effects of devil's breath just because it's a simple way out. Getting robbed with scopolamine sounds much better than giving everything you own to a loan shark so that you get to keep breathing. Maybe the best advice to give in general is kind of similar to what you'd tell a child. Don't take candy from a stranger, seriously. And also never ever ever read the comments on articles on predatory situations. Sweet baby Jesus it's so polarizing. Just like you, people either love you or hate you. There's no in between. Wow, that's surprisingly deep coming from you. I know, that means I need a drink. And if you like this video, just give it a thumbs down. I showed them in the title. And if you press on the subscribe button while you're there, I won't have to use devil's breath on you to make you do it. I kind of feel down after making this video. I knew about devil's breath for quite some time, although you tend to put aside such things. But hey, you know what always cheers me up? Butts. <laughs>